All right, so the meets and bounds method worked really well. However, it loses its effectiveness the second you start getting a bunch of distance, like thousands of feet or tens of thousands of feet. So the government had to come up with a second method to work in a bigger scenario. Because remember, the rock that we landed on a long time ago was way bigger than we actually thought it was. So we came out with the meets and bounds. And then as we started moving west, we found out that the rock was huge. So they created the second method in 1785. Now, there's two things that are important about that. One is that's probably the last time the government came up with anything that actually worked. <laughs> and the second is, remember, they did the entire United States by foot. They walked this to get this done. We did not get very good gas mileage in 1785. So they did the entire United States on foot. And here's how it works. This method is actually so good that every city in the United States uses this method to get house numbers. Have you ever wondered where your house number get, comes from? It's from this rectangular survey method. This is how Jimmy John's gets to your house so fast. This is how Domino's, well, now they use GPS, but this was it. This is how the police and fire and EMT would get to your house because they knew that like my address is 432 South Emerson, that is 0 0.432 miles south of the zero line in Johnson County, Indiana. If you lived at a 2156 North whatever, that's 2.156 miles north of the zero line in that county. That comes from this. Here's another clue. The game Battleship actually comes from this as well. You'll see it here is what I'm talking about. Now, what it's done, and I've taken the liberty to go ahead and recreate a drawing here so to make it real easy. What happens is there is a series of principal meridians that are throughout the United States. Now, Indiana happens to use principal meridian number two. It's also used by Kentucky and parts of Illinois. And there's all the way principal meridians are all the way out through Hawaii, through Alaska, all of that. So understand that principal meridian, it's all based upon this principal meridian. And in this drawing here, I have drawn the principal meridian with a red line, just so you could see the difference. Now, Surrounding those principal meridians is range lines. And if you look at the top or the side of the R, that's how you can remember that range lines run north and south. All right. And those range lines are situated every six miles apart. So the first range line is six miles. The second range line is 12 miles. The third range line is 13 miles. In between the range lines, in that green right there, you can see a strip of land. The strip of land is called a range, as in home, home on the range. That range is six miles wide. So here's the first range, here's the second range, Here's the first range, the second range, the third range, the fourth range, and it keeps going. Now, intersecting that range, or that principal meridian, is this thing called a baseline. I have taken the liberty of drawing it in red as well. Where the baseline and the principal meridian meet, is a thing called the pivot point. Now, the nerd in me went out and I found the pivot point for Indiana. Uh, that's only because that's where I live. It is way down in southern Indiana in Orange County, down by French Lick, Indiana. If anybody knows where that is, that's the there's a casino down there and things like that. So that is the zero zero. 
that baseline is also surrounded by vertical lines that run east and west right here. Those vertical lines have a name called a township line. Notice the top of the T right here that will help you remember that township lines run horizontal. They run east and west. These township lines are actually six miles wide the same way. It creates a strip of land in green right here called a tier. So you have strips of land that run east and west called a tier. You have a strip of land running north and south called a range. Where each strip of land intersects with the other strip, you have a thing called a township. In the drawing there, it's in blue. That This is the one I'm talking about. That township is how big? Exactly. It's six miles tall by six miles wide. Therefore, it's 36 square miles. Now, do not get this township confused with a political township like a center township or a White River township or a Clark township or Green. Those are used for politics and voting and things of that nature. This is a geographic township that is used for legal descriptions. It is 36 square miles. Now, how do we identify every one of these townships? How do we identify these different from each other? Because remember, you cannot have two similar properties. So each township is given a coordinate based on the principal meridian that it's at and the baseline. And in this situation right here, you can see that this is going to be a series of townships and they are going to be south of the baseline. How many townships are they south? Well, here's the first tier south of the baseline. Here's the second tier south of the baseline. Here is the third tier. So anything in this tier of property right through here is going to be identified as three tiers south. Three tiers south. All right? So which range is it? Well, here's the zero line. This is one range, what? West of the zero line. Two ranges west of the zero line. Three ranges west of the zero line. So everything in this range right through here is going to be three ranges west three ranges west. So that township that we're looking at right here is identified as three tier south, three range west. Now I will tell you, you could also say three range west, three tier south. It could go either way. There is no preference to that. So that township is identified and if you remember the game of battleship where you go you know letter seven and you go down this way and you find that spot you oh you sunk my battleship it's the same concept because we're going from the zero line we're going west three south three to get to that so let's do one more just for you guys to practice let's go and look at this one right here So hit the pause and take a look at it and then start it back. 
Okay, so now you're back. So what is the township that we are talking about? Well, it is still west of the zero line, one west, two west. So it is literally two ranges west, two ranges west. And in this particular case, it is one tier north. There's the second tier north. There's the third tier north. So this range is identified as three tiers north. That's what this township would be. Two range west, three tier north. Now, don't forget, you have to attach it to whatever the principal meridian is. And in this particular example, we're going to use number two just as an example. So let's write that up there to make sure we understand. That's principal meridian number two. Number two. So this township that we're looking at right here is two ranges west, three tiers north of principal meridian number two. All right? Because there probably is a two range west, three tier north of principal meridian number three. And two range west, three tier north of principal meridian number seven and 14. So you always have to attach, you always have to attach that township to what principal meridian you're talking about. So what you have is this township that is 36 square miles. All right, so is that small enough to be able to find me? If I asked you, I said, hey, man, I need you to pick me up for class tomorrow so I can teach. And I live at two ranges west, three tiers north, principal meridian number two. Could you find me? Now, I'm hoping you guys are all going to say no, because <laughs> that's going to make this a lot easier if you did. So what we have to do is now take each one of these townships. Remember and catch what I just said. Each one of these townships and what we are going to do is actually maybe move this into this township, all right? So that's what I've got, is a township that is now, how big? It is now six by six. And which one did we decide to use? Two ranges west, three tiers north. So let's label this one. Two ranges west, three tiers north. <clears throat> All I've done, I hope you understand, is zoom in on that township. I've taken this township right here and I've zoomed in on it. And we know that it's six by six. The problem is we cannot find a specific house in there or me. So what we're going to do is take each one of those townships and divide it down. And we're going to divide it down into 36 sections is the word you're looking for. So each one of these little things here is called a section. And there are how many? 36. Well, that's kind of convenient, don't you think? How big is this? 36 square miles. So each one of these sections is going to be how big? It is going to be one mile by one mile. And now we need to identify them, so we are going to number them. And when we number them, they start in the upper right-hand corner. Why the upper right-hand corner? Well, the reason is because, remember, we started on the east side of this country and we worked west. 
So they just said, well, why wouldn't we walk all the way over there, walk back? Let's just start here and number them that way. So they numbered them. Now, when they got there, do you think that they picked their stuff up, walked back to the beginning and started it again? No. They actually just turned around and went back. Like I said, one of the amazing things about this, if you understand, is they did this on foot. And if you guys are fans of football, you know when they stretch those chains out for the first down? One guy puts here and then the other guy stretches it 10 yards and puts it down and that's the first down. That's how they did this. They had a couple guys. One would hold the stake or the stick with the chain and they would stretch it tight. And then this guy would move and stretch it tight. Then this guy would move and they would progress all the way across and they knew exactly how many chains, which is one of the original terms for measuring real estate was how many chains. They knew exactly how many chains was a mile or six miles. And then they would turn around and measure them back. And then they would get there and they would turn around and measure them back again. Then they would turn around and go backwards again. Now, once again, it just absolutely blows my mind that if you think about they did this on foot throughout the whole United States. Now, if we're good, this comes out to be 36. And I love it when a plan comes together. So what you have are 36 sections inside of this township that we are calling two range west, three tier north, right? This is the township. And that township comes from over here. You can never get that to work right right here so there is the exact same thing here and here and here and here and here and here all right so that's what we have now what you need to memorize is this that section 36 section 36 section 16 is the school section. I was hoping that was going to be clear. Section 16, by definition, is the school section. Why? Because it's virtually, if you notice, in the middle here. Now, it's probably done somewhere down in here so it's real close you know to the middle but section 16 is always considered the school section that and you just have to memorize that all right so what happens now is we identify the section that this person lives in and for this example i am going to say section 26 so this, by definition now, is section 26 of two ranges west, two tiers north of principal meridian number two. All right. That is the only section. And that section is how big? One mile by one mile or one square mile. But yet, if I said, hey, can you pick me up? You're going to say, no, that's still too big. So what we're going to do is look at each section. 